Fleetwood Mac was back on top. 30 years after their first chart success, their dance concert had been followed by a world tour and their dance album had reached number one on the Billboard chart. But the good times were under threat. Christine McVie had been a member of the band since 1970. She had even agreed to share the limelight with Lindsay's girlfriend, Stevie Nicks. What could you have thought when Lindsay walks in with his girlfriend and maybe the most beautiful woman on earth and you're the woman in Fleetwood Mac. For all those years, she and Stevie had been the female core of the band. But after the dance tour, Christine simply walked away. The whole showbiz thing was never big with Chris. She sold her house in Los Angeles and basically moved back to England. I think that was it, and I just said, I've got, I just have to go home. It still took me five years to finally move back here. But no, I have had no regrets. Lindsay and Stevie were sort of at the front, and Christine may have felt a little bit pushed aside. It really affected Stevie more than, than anyone. I mean, they were friends. Me, I'm an old gigster. We like to get on the stage and play, and Stevie's the same way. So we're, we're, there's an ethic about getting out there and showing off, or whatever you call it. She never had that, you know? Whatever her reasons, in the end, the rest of this tight-knit band of brothers and sisters had to respect her decision. There actually is a lot of love in a band like Fleetwood Mac. She burst into tears, and I held her in my arms, and she just looked straight at me and said, please don't ask me. Mick knew it would be useless to ask her to stay. You know, it was at the end of an era, for sure. What was not so sure was that the band could find their roles in the new era they were now entering without Christine. The lack of the keyboard as, as a, uh, a presence allowed me to flex, reassert my guitar uh, style a little more. It put a, a stress on Lindsay. I think that that was something that I was able to do in more full force. Uh, as a four-piece band than I had ever been able to do before. Through 2002, Lindsay had been working on material for a new solo album. But in the continuing climate of togetherness, in 2003, the band decided to create a Fleetwood Mac album instead. I had something like a, a completed solo album, and Mick had played on quite a bit of it, so it had much of the signature of Fleetwood Mac about it. I was happy to, to be making an album, but it had its problems. Because Stevie, too, had been working on solo projects. The challenge was to integrate her work into the mix. What do you think? Am I just... I like it. Don't think about it. We'll do uh, as many tracks as you want until you get tired, and then we'll make something wonderful out of it later. Lindsay and me and John had already done a cartload of stuff and it was hard to integrate in the way that it should have been at that point and, I, and it showed. You could say it's not the most coherent piece of work but you could say that about a lot of things we've done. You certainly could say that about Tusk which is probably my favorite Fleetwood Mac album. But they needn't have worried. Absolutely blown away by that album. As far as I'm concerned, Say You Will is their, their greatest ever album. Absolutely Lindsay Buckingham's finest hour. I love those songs. They were hits in my heart and in my mind. What it does is it uh, confirms the, the idea that Lindsay Buckingham is, is Fleetwood Mac's built in Brian Eno stroke Brian Wilson. There's some astonishing stuff going on, on the album. The album debuted at number three on the Billboard 200 chart and Peacekeeper and the title track, Say You Will, also charted as singles. 2004 saw the band out on the road with their Say You Will tour. The good times were rolling again, on stage and off. And Lindsay and Stevie were on more level ground, at last. This was the girl that I used to live with. And it was no longer bittersweet, which it had been for so long. It was just sweet. Lindsay and I, you know, we have something very special. We decided to do this a long, long time ago. 
and we fought for it. You know, we had a pot of gold that we were searching for together, and we never gave up until we got it. So now, that's a pretty great thing. It is a strange, tortured love story. He loves Stevie, uh, as we all do. Has it sort of happened? Absolutely. Does it sort of happen uh, on stage? Absolutely. Now the two of us can link arms and walk out on stage and say to, to everyone without saying it, we worked very hard for this. After the Say You Will tour, the band took a break to catch up on their own individual projects. Then in 2006, with Christine eight years gone, they looked at bringing in another female vocalist. I said, well, what if there was another person? You know, just a what if. For instance, what if there was Cheryl Crow? I know Stevie and Cheryl have always been very close, and there's a lot of respect. She is sort of this timeless character to me. And she doesn't change, and she still maintains her integrity, and she just is able to sort of um, kind of radiate this youthfulness. That young lady's got the stuff. But as so often before, the band was divided, this time on the wisdom of including Cheryl in the lineup. What was she going to be doing, coming out and in, in playing Christine McVie songs? Or is she, she's certainly not going to come out and play Cheryl Crow songs. Yeah, she's a, a fairly raunchy, folk and country-inflected pop singer. The whole thing didn't quite make sense to me conceptually. And then you'd think, yeah, she's kind of a, a surrogate, younger Stevie. Makes sense. Totally wrong. No one can replace Christine McVie, and Cheryl is an artist in her own right. It would have been interesting, but we took a different turn. In March of 2008, Cheryl Crow announced that, after all, she would not be working with Fleetwood Mac in 2009. It was to be another first for the Mac, a greatest hits tour without an album to promote. There's a certain freedom uh, to coming to the realization that people may want to hear your body of work that already exists. It taught us a nice lesson that we can do that, and we did it, and we loved it, and the audience loved it. Their audience has been loyal to Fleetwood Mac with all their comings and goings since the band first formed in 1967. Getting older, still going strong. 40 years ago, who would have foreseen the extraordinary ongoing appeal of this unlikely band? Well, you can never, I mean, you can never market research Fleetwood Mac into being. People would say that, no, they don't look right, that, that one's too tall, his hair's wrong, they're half from America, half from England. They really were a band that was an expression of the male and the female spirit sort of battling it out. The haphazard nature of existence has brought to, together these five individuals from various corners of the globe, and it's, kind of, it's somehow worked. Making love, making war, uh, and in the end, just making some of the greatest records of all time. It's Buckingham Knicks. They, they are out the front, and Fleetwood Mac are right there behind them, and that's the band, you know. It should be like that. Music that primally good can keep you young and keep you alive, and uh, I hope they never stop. There are things that have yet to happen in Fleetwood Mac. Uh, Lindsay and me would love to make another Fleetwood Mac album. I, th I think we should certainly make uh, at least one more album. Fleetwood Mac has been making music together for nearly 40 years, and it's the fact they stayed together that is perhaps the greatest tribute of all. If I did it all over again, I'd probably do the same thing. I love my music. I'm not willing to give up my music for anybody. I truly suspect that when we next go out, there'll be something mix of what Stevie and Lindsay have done, and we can play some of that on stage. I know that Lindsay and I have to spend a lot more time together. Our karma says that we have to spend a lot of time together. We have to be in a band for 100 more years together. I don't think they'll stop making music with one another until someone drops. And I hope that never happens. In the chain, Fleetwood Mac sings of love lost and love rescued. They sing of darkness and sunrises. They sing of a bond that can never be broken, a fitting prophecy for a group of very different people who will forever be linked together by their lives, their dreams, 
and their music. This reconvening is, it's a truthful uh, reconvening, it's a truthful feel to it, it's a, it's a reflection of, of everyone having healed.